is a liminal night. This is a liminal space. Tonight tradition is the hillsides, the sacred hillsides, belong to the fairy queen Anya, belong to the fairy host. So for that reason, for tradition and for your own safety, <laughs> let's not be up here when it gets dark. It's also a lot safer going down the road, if you can see where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to Ishnok for the summer solstice. My God, what a day. There as tight as you can. Will do. I have literally already stepped in cow shite. I stepped right out of the car and into cow shite. What do you mean you've never heard of a fairy tree? <laughs> All fairy trees are hawthorn trees, but not all hawthorn trees are fairy trees. You see a lot of hawthorn in ditching. It's quite practical. Catholics like to stay away from it because it's prickly. But the tradition here is you do not cut it because it will cut you back. This is the Hill of Ushnok, Knuck Ushni, the sacred centre of Celtic Ireland, the sacred centre of Celtic Europe. Believed to be the physical centre of the land for thousands of years and recently proven to be pretty much the exact centre of the land. But more importantly that, it was the spiritual centre. It was the focus of both the royalty and the sovereign and the spiritual high kingship. The high kings of Ireland ruled from here. Someone off in the distance hooting and hollering. It's one of those places where history and mythology and culture all come together right on this spot. From a spiritual point of view, it is the resting place of so many of our gods. It was here that Eru came to rest. Not where they're buried, where they rest. Most critically, of course, being Eru herself. She who is this land, she for whom this land was named. She rests here under a stone known as Isle Namurin, the Stone of the Visions, colloquially known as the Cat Stone. That space underneath is the bedchamber of Eru, where she herself rests. You will not get more connected to the divine feminine of this land than when you are around this space. The only man in living memory to actually physically damage this stone was Eamon de Valera himself. He drilled a hole in it to stick a flag in it. But then, as most people say, what did he ever care for the divine feminine? This sacred site here is what being Irish is all about. And even if you're not Irish, enough of our ancestors have walked in this site here that our blood has been here before. Our energies have been here before. And our, our descendants will come here again. We, 10,000 years, we're just a blip in the life of this site. This is a place where we can connect with all those who've gone before and all those who are coming afterwards. You cannot put a price or a value on that. The tradition is to go around three times Joshal, sunwise, clockwise, even though the word itself comes from the word yesh. Because even though you're going around to the left, you're paying tribute at your right hand. Because you have disarmed yourself before the goddess. This our most sacred of sites. First time round, you think about what it is you want to let go of. Second time round, you focus on what it is you want to bring into your life. And on the third time round, you tell Eru, what you're going to do to make it happen, because she won't help you if you won't help yourself. If you tell her how you're going to do it, she'll do everything she can to support you. And she does. Most people have come back here in tears, having had life-changing moments. In agricultural society, the springtime is a back-breaking time. It is a hard work. The wheel of the year turns, you come to Bialtana. And here, it was critical for Bialtana. The High King would summon the peoples of the land here to lay out the laws, to arrange marriages, to arrange negotiations and contracts and traders would come from all over the world to here because you could rest at Bialtana. The hard work was done. Eru was at her most fertile. Eru is growing. And then the wheel of the year turns and things start drying up. The sun hits its zenith today. And now we know we can start relaxing a little bit. The water is going to start coming back. And now we're going to get ready for the harvest. The hard work is ahead. So now is the last chance to rest before the harvest. We are of this land. And we are of the water surrounding this land. Without those rays now reaching us, none of us would be here. Without this soil beneath us, none of us would be here. And the day we forget that, none of us will be here. Today the sun is finishing her journey. She's coming to a stall, the green stud. 
And as we rise with her tomorrow morning, we have two more days to celebrate that, that zenith of the sun. Sun at our most powerful. Us at our most powerful. The setting sun tonight sets over the fit abode of the goddess of the dark times for this land, the Morrigan. Her time is coming, but not yet. Under twinkle of her star, the gypsy dives in. Water so cold on her lily white skin. First, we have a lot of work to do. Ere was just at her most fertile, but that time is passing with this setting sun. Now we face into the hard work of our harvest. Those of us who have done the hard work have a reward to reap. If you have been doing something in your life that you are trying to channel now, by when you hit Lunasa, be ready to reap. So you have six weeks to prepare yourself, six weeks to finish the work, six weeks to work with the glory of that sun. Long hair behind her, if any did spy, they would sing of the mermaid in the sea that night. The cores of our existence of all humanity, of all species on this planet. The slightest biome to the greatest blue whale. All that power, all that energy comes from that sun. Can everyone face to the north? And we'll do a quick peace call. And may there be peace in the north. Peace. The elements of the earth and the great bear. Let there be peace in the south. With the great stag of summer and the element of fire. And may there be peace in the west with the setting sun. And with the element of water and with the salmon of knowledge. Let that setting sun bring you the knowledge you need to bring forth what you want in your life. And let there be peace in the east. The element of the air, the great hawk of dawn. And we look forward to the re-coming of the sun and the time of Bridget. And let there be peace in us all. Peace in, us all. Peace in our hearts. Peace in our, hearts. Peace in our minds. Peace in our, minds. Peace in our souls. Peace in our, souls. Peace in our interactions with each other. Peace in our You've made a vow, please stick to it. I <laughs> know oh, I won't hold anyone to it. <laughs> well, we are of this last few moments of this sun. These are the last few minutes of the zenith, the green stud, the solstice. And when you go home from here, may you grow, may you prosper, and may you love. Accordia, Bannock D, and green stud. She stepped away from me and she And so fondly I watched her move here and move there. As she went her way homeward with one star awake as the swan in the So I really wanted to go to the Hill of Aishnook for the Baltina celebrations. The footage I saw of the Baltina celebrations afterwards looked like it was absolutely unreal. But I was actually doing stand-up that night, so couldn't do both because it's a nighttime thing. I'm doing a comedy gig for my tag rugby team and it's stand up in front of all your mates. So it's like better but yet also worse somehow than actual stand up. Different vibes. Summer solstice is much more reflective, connecting with nature. I feel like Baltina looks like a big massive party. <laughs> so, so I will definitely be back. If you like this video, you might like some of the other videos that I have. Nice vague outro because I can't remember the names of the video. Please consider becoming a patron if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Slán, slán.